and a three, and a two, and a... Sunday, August 18th, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out of the Bear Podcast of Determined Length, episode number 521. And it's only 11 more days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Until I've made it 39 trips around the sun. Whoop, whoop. And uh, 12 more days. Until a very special event, annual event. <laughs> so excited. I'm always so excited, <laughs> I suppose. Where Jeff drinks too much and gets naked. It's true. <laughs> I, there, there is no false uh, falsehood in this. No mm. lies detected. No <laughs> lies detected. <clears throat> nice. So, Gary, what is we talking about? Do you have a clip for this? No, I'm was too tired. <laughs> that face, Gary. That and face. <laughs> which, is, which is one of the reasons why I brought up in, in the chat and I said, I sense it. I was assuming that somebody else was in the process of getting one, but uh, you were busy. You were busy. You were busy. You didn't have I, time to. It's fine. Was. It's fine. It's fine. I was busy thinking because you brought it up that you would go do it. We have the most <laughs> excellent communication skills in between us. As Look, our communication isn't as bad as the communication that our our entire team has at work so it's fine well that means it defaults to damon as the singer amongst us wait what <laughs> about aretha <laughs> oh gosh D- just just spell it out <laughs> Literally. Just... uh so what are we talking about today what are we talking about today maybe r-e-s-b-c-t find out what it means to me r-e-s-b-c-t Take care, take. Well, that's it. That's it. That's all <laughs> you get. Like. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> that's it. Look, it's that's fine it. if you're singing it. It's if you're playing the original. Ah, is where it where can... get, get clunky. Besides, that was yeah. enough. That that was fun. And not that I wouldn't mind you continuing. It's just you, you're good. It's fine. It's fine. Anyway, got it. Total sidebar before we get into the subject. So, has the CMH actually sung that song? The CMC? Sorry, CMC. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, my first year, we did an arrangement of it. Um, and then we've sung it. Have we sung it again? No. I don't think we have. Well, but. I have I have no skin in this game, but I vote that uh, y'all should sing it again, just because I think it would be fun to watch quite a few gay men queen out on stage. To think so, we probably will... So, sidebar of the sidebar. <laughs> <laughs> sidebar deception. Um, our, concert, our concert in the spring and in the, um, our pride concert, our spring concert is, I believe, no, that's Brit Girls, never mind. That's um, God Save the Queen, which will be our British show. But our spring, our, our pride concert is going to be... Um, I believe it's going to be on girl, like a, like like famous sing, female singers and stuff, mm-hmm. and it's going to be a big gay thing. So, depending on how much it costs to license to do that song, mm-hmm. um, might be able to do it. And considering she is gone, mm, we'll see. <laughs> oh, the price goes up after the artist. Sometimes, is... oh. sometimes, oh. sometimes it does. Interesting. But we'll see. We shall see. 
Could you could you do a facsimile with all different words with the same musical arrangement? No. <laughs> you, you would you would basically be running into similar things, you know, when like people take uh, loops from so other people's things and put it into their songs. They still need to put a li- pay the licensing thing. There was a whole thing with the Vanilla yeah. Ice's thing. Uh, yeah, so. it's it's a possibility. It's but don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. I don't see what the big deal is. It's not like they're asking for respect of the fact that the artist actually, you know, was well known for it and someone should get paid because, you know, someone wrote the song, someone else arranged it, someone produced it, someone released it. Hmm, that's not... Well, I do believe that the person who did all of those things did, but if they're no longer around anymore. Then the estate has the right to make a claim. So, yeah, I know. Kind yeah. Of the estate so. has the right to, but dot, dot, dot. <laughs> We're getting into ah. politics. Anyways, let's let's talk let's talk about respect. Yes, let's. Uh so uh it's another what is series and this one uh popped up just in like a generality of Technically it's another episode of the series, it's still the same series. Thank you. <laughs> Semantics. Funkin' Wagnalls. So <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, but this was discussion, you know, what is respect, uh, kind of in terms of like respect for ourselves versus respect for each other. Uh, I feel that right now this is sort of a hot topic button in that some individuals point out that other people are not being very respectful Mm -hmm. by how they're behaving or what they're doing. So, um, and within our own community, I think sometimes there's confusion about, well, I don't know if I want to say confusion. It's almost like what we don't recognize is who else should be, you know, given mm. respect, so to speak. Uh, and respect, you know, has different meanings for different people. So I think uh, maybe that's like the first thing that we should start off with is what we kind of define it as like mm-hmm. um i personally you know have always thought of it as kind of the golden rule um you know treating others as i would expect to be treated you know mm-hmm. so uh but that doesn't always work mm-hmm. or seem to apply because you know there's this whole circumstance to circumstance thing or yeah so if you wish, I just did a quick like dictionary search because that's how I am. Um, it's very Damon. respect. Yeah, that's, that's so me. Damon. <sighs> that's me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, um, respect. There's two quick um, definitions: a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their abilities, qualities, or achievements. And then there's also um, due regard for the feelings, wishes, rights, and traditions of others. Ta-da. Hmm. And then that says the noun, and then as a verb, it's obviously admire deeply as a result of their abilities, qualities, or achievements. Ta-da. So, yeah. So, for, um, I kind of agree with you, Gary, in a lot of ways that sometimes my respect is usually due to, in general terms, is based on like the golden rule, you know, treat it how you would want to be treated, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as someone who comes from, you know, as you can see, the leather, you know, community, there is also a level of respect given to, uh, for lack of a better term, we'll use honorifics, you know, sirs and boys and pups and everything else. There are certain manners of respect in that community. There's a lot of conversation, though, about that, I don't want to say necessarily going away, but that that kind of has been marred by tradition over just general like deed, Hmm. you know? Yeah. Like for some people, there's a tradition where a sir is a sir, like you're a sir, you know? And so you will be treated in a certain way. Um, Whereas now, um, while there is a general, to me, there's a general, like, overarching, like, respect given to everyone, I don't have to be 
more respectful to you because you have are a sir than I could be to someone else or like your boy or whatever because you are not my sir. Now your if you are a sir and you have a boy it's or a you have a relationship thing. Ever, yeah, if you would have something along those lines, then obviously that respect is established. But it's a it's a it's a have, different respect. Yeah. I wouldn't have to necessarily do what you say or anything along those lines. I can respect you as a person. Like I would mm-hmm. respect every person as a person, but I don't have to give you more respect because you have this title or this whatever. Well, you could also think of it this way is it's not necessarily a difference of level of expect like respect, like more or less. It's just a different, it's just a different dynamic. So the respect is just different. I wouldn't necessarily it can say be. anything is necessarily more or less respectful. Respect well, is respect. And, but uh, and, and that would be true in some situations, but like it's demonstrating the respect is different. Yeah, and but in like traditional like leather communities and leather households, sometimes that respect is sometimes you're supposed to be it's supposed to be given without any Right, you know, like mm-hmm. yeah, sometimes, yeah. But as I said, it's it's different. Well, than, and, different and I think that's one of the confusing points for people is like we have that that concept that's out there or has been out there. And I don't know if people still say this about how you have to earn respect. Mm-hmm. And I think that gets said and confused with other things because I respect people in general, and I respect like you know authority to a certain degree, Mm -hmm. but I also feel like you like with that authority comes responsibility. Mm -hmm. And if you do not wield that well or handle that authority, that responsibility well, then I may not respect you as much because I feel that, you know, you are misstepping or, you know, perhaps not being respectful. Yeah, like the, you know, the hard part of the definition was about like feeling of deep affirmation for like someone's achievements, you know, it's great that that actor has won that award and, and everyone loves their abilities and whatever. But then if they're a dick, (laughs) you know, like if they're awful to production crews and awful to like their fans and what have you, then they're going to lose some level of respect and again like you may be able to respect them say as a as an individual as a person as a human but maybe that's as far as it goes sometimes well and and i think that's one of the things that people struggle with you know like our current political uh situation people may feel you know that you have to respect you know people who are in office who you know no matter what their uh political alignment is no matter to the decisions that they make you know and and i can understand that like they're but that only goes to a certain point i think for most people you know i don't think everyone is 100 percent across the board all the time you know willing to say that they respect the wishes and the natures you know and the and the motives or whatever of, of mm-hmm. an individual um and i think that becomes challenging so you know w- within our own community i think that until people point out that someone is being disrespectful, there's just a presumption automatically that we are giving respect mm-hmm. to other individuals. And it isn't until someone kind of raises their hand and calls it out and says like, Hey, like, you know, yeah. like big boys need love too. Or, yep. you know, like to tie it back to like the chat, you know, I posted that ad because so, you know, I'm with my dad. He's a, uh, had to go into a rehab facility. And mm-hmm. so we're watching television. I've watched more television in the past couple of days than I have probably like in like a year. And by that, <laughs> I mean, like I'm seeing advertising and I'm like, you know, we're like watching real television. history channel. Yeah. Like not Hulu or Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, it, you're watching like aired television versus correct. Uh, but. self-selected programming <laughs> <There you go. laughs> so i'm watching advertising and this advert comes up and i was like what is the i was like that's a big boy that's a big boy in underwear that is a big boy in underwear dancing to like run it like what it... i was like okay like i've been commenting to dad about how stupid some advertising is right now like yeah real stupid 
<laughs> I'm just going to call it out right now because we ain't going to get no endorsements. I ain't worried about it. Sam Adams, <laughs> your new 76 logger, your commercials are dumb. <laughs> so now you know what logger tastes like. What the fuck was it before? What's the other shit that you make? Is that not a logger? I don't think y'all thought this through very well <laughs> as advertising. <laughs> Because this is another beer that you're making. You kind of make it seem like the other stuff that you make is shit. And that this is actually the better stuff. Huh? Y'all pay too much money for that advertising campaign. All right. Get off my soapbox. So. <laughs> what is it? Like Ed Brett or Ed Brett yeah. slash Brad. Yeah. Back Look, I know you. I know you lagered the beer. So the yeast was in the bottom, not the top. So, anyways, I saw this commercial, and I was like, that was kind of cute. That was interesting. Chubby dude trying on underwear in a store with his wife there, presumably his wife, and other people. And he got no care. He got no care that he's just standing in his underwear, kind of looking like a Speedo. Um, I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. So I put it into the chat, because to me, I was like, look at this. Like big dude cute dude and like kind of being respectful like in and terms of like you know totally body looking at his butt which has the name of the company on it <laughs> yes that is like the end shot it's it's like perfect <laughs> perfect advertisement for our <laughs> i'm sure there's some tops out so, there who were you know pleasantly you know pleased with that so oh, oh don't tell me you don't look at look at other guys butts not because you oh. want to do things to the to the butt but they may look nice my face is framed a, a butt or two in some time see? see see you know i've gotten i've gotten some some consent giving it some respect so to <laughs> <laughs> so bring it back into the show <laughs> right. so, but the whole point of like that was to be i was like oh well this is like this is respectful in that, like, I don't think that the guy was being made fun of, really, at all. Like, mm -hmm. if anything, it was more about this awkward body positivity moment in which he had no cares of the world. That, you know, he felt good the way he looked in a store where he, you know, was trying on, presumably, the underwear. And did not apparently want to put any other clothes on. Um, <laughs> so I was like, okay. You do you, boo. Like, and, and you know, for yay for marketing, because I kind of mm -hmm. felt like, you know, this is this is something that can speak to a, a larger, you know, kind of piece. On airspace, yeah. Uh, no pun intended. Yeah. So, uh, but more often than not, I feel like people feel or interpret messaging as disrespectful. But they may not like they may not call it out like they may not put that label on things because it's subliminal. Mm -hmm. Like the 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 feeling is subliminal, like it's under the surface. So I'll put it this way. Um, you see, you know, media promotion for an event, for entertainment, for something. Mm -hmm. And it's you know, it all comes down to this. We all do this. Like, do we see ourselves in blank? whatever that thing is, do we see ourselves represented? And if we don't, I think that's the subliminal message, like that we're being disrespected if we don't see ourselves in it. Now, is mm -hmm. it intentional? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Like, you know, it's quite possible that they did not on purpose include individuals, you know, that they didn't seek out, you know, as, as much variety as possible. It's mm -hmm. difficult to say. Um, I was listening to a podcast earlier today, and the host of this podcast got feedback on a previous show. And what was interesting is the feedback from a, a listener said, perhaps we don't always see, like, perhaps it's not that we see our own race in, in this description as, like, that we can only see that and we, you know, we kind of blur the others. Maybe it's more about our local environment. And this person claimed that they were Caucasian and that they were overseas in Japan. And they're like, I can easily tell the difference between Japanese people. I happen to be home in the States. I'm in a store and I look across the store and I think I see my mother. I go walking over, come to find out not my mother. 
it's a Caucasian woman with hair and about the same height and build as my mother, not my mother. And he used that as an interesting example to say to the host, like, perhaps it's more about our environment and familiarity, like, than it is that we actually are colorblind or mm-hmm. that we can't tell the difference between other individuals because we're not them. And I found it, you know, kind of interesting. And the reason I bring this up is I think that that's a part of this whole, like, what is our awareness and whether or not that pays into like the whole concept of respect. Hmm. Because when I first started learning, like as an example, because Damon, you were bringing up about, you know, it was leather, uh, Cincinnati leather weekend with a contest. When I first started learning about the leather community, I was a real jerk about it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I was like, <laughs> Oh, People getting kinky, people beating the shit out of each other, got no respect for each other, get out, da 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 da. <laughs> because I didn't know anything. Like, I just very much saw it from an outside lens. And it wasn't until I met people who were involved in the leather community while I was working at a clothing optional gay, you know, male campground that Damon has been to, uh, that, you know, on leather weekends, I met sirs and boys and slaves and masters, you know, and I, I got to witness demonstrations that they did, you know, in public. And I, you know, I learned from that experience or those experiences more about how actually like the structure is built on consent and respect. Mm -hmm. And I found it very interesting because then the more I paid attention to it, then I started taking that concept and overlaying it on other parts of our communities. Yeah. And then I was like, ah, that's not always the case. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like a, a trying to, the, the way to not yuck someone else's yum is to learn about it. It may not be your thing, but having an idea of what people who are into that think, yeah. understand, and, and just learn about it is yeah definitely a good thing. In fact, it, it almost makes me just want to like, restart or LTAKs and like, just <laughs> like revisit everything again, just to, to kind of gain a, maybe new, perspective. Even get a new perspective and uh, from things we've learned. Yeah. I mean, I, like it's, I mean, I think that's totally fair. You know, mm-hmm. as a circumstance, when I came out in, all right, I was going to be silly and be like, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but I came, I came out in, in 92. So, uh, mm-hmm. almost 27 years ago. Yeah. So Follow that pill for a second. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when I came out, one of the first gay bars I ever went to, there were some older gay men sitting at the bar. It was like a Wednesday night. It was not a busy night by any means. So older, older queenie gay men, uh, being bar flies are sitting at the bar and there were lesbians in the back room where there was a pool table. Very stereotypical. How and unfortunately, also stereotypical was the attitude at the time, uh, and mm-hmm. which still may be a little bit pervasive today. The these you know uh, older gay men. I'm going to be respectful. Uh, you know, we're talking trash about the women in the back and saying very derogatory things. And I was so confused by this because I was like, "What is like? Why like?" Why do we have to behave that way? Because Mm -hmm. I'm new to being gay and going out. And I'm like, but why? Like, what confused me is like, it's like there was this like, tasteable contempt. Yeah. And I was like, what is going on here? Because in my mind, I'm like, for every gay man, this is this is this is not real math. Y'all do not take this to the bank. Do not. (laughs) There's not a study that confirms this. Okay. But if for every gay man there is a lesbian, it's a balance. Mm-hmm. Two gay men, two dicks getting together, two women, two lesbians, two hoot nannies, whatever, <laughs> getting together. <laughs> anyway. Dicks versus hoot nannies. Yeah, you, know, you know, nanu. But yeah, I don't I, know. I, I'm not around young girls anymore. The JJ's. But it's so it's funny that you say that, but that's kind of I remember that, too. You know, when I came out just maybe, you know, six or seven, eight years later, you know, that was part of it. There was this 90, like 98, 99, you know, officially, unofficially. Anyway, 
Hey, um, we're coming out, bros. Yeah. About the same time. Thing. But, um, but yeah, like that was sort of the thing that was around. Like that, there was this weird contempt almost for 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 lesbians, for women, period. But, you know, it was this very just like disconnection, you know, ang- not anger, but just like, wow. wow, like it's there. Like, what's that? You know, it just, and that has, you know, it was funny. Um, it spills over, you know, and it spilled over to me. And I, for not for a long time, but for a very short while, I kind of absorbed that and like, had that weird feeling about like women and men in the gay men's spaces and, and everything like that. And now I just don't, I don't care anymore. But, you know, being a baby gay at the time and dealing with all of that, you know, spoken and unspoken you know, um, disrespect, it, it, it does, you know, you do take it in, you do absorb it, especially when you're new to the whole experience of, of your own sexuality. You know, we learn by experience. We learn by watching others. We learn, um, you know, I learned it by watching you kind of thing. That's kind of, that's there. That is part of that. That So by being around people and having that be a thing for a while at least it you know it did pervade for me and i i feel bad knowing what i you know may have said and done in those years so i i I just i want to clarify something quickly here because my wow was probably not what you were thinking my wow was for my wow was i had a completely different experience Mm. well that's i mean and that's that's great for you <laughs> yeah I'm because just it's like like it, I, I i just find it interesting that the two of you had this experience where you had this like animosity between uh the the lesbians and the gays and that my whole experience well was more of like we're all gay <laughs> lesbians is just just like the female specific word for gay Mm-hmm. You know, men, uh, 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 cis, cis, uh, gay men are just gay. <laughs> we don't right. even have a specific word. And I'm like, no, we're, we're, I mean, it's LGBT, DLBT, whichever version. I don't know when the switch happened or if it ever happened or how that whole thing, you know, happened. But it, it's just so, I, I was like, wow, really? You were getting this mm-hmm. experience when you were coming out? And I'm like, I have, I never had that. Yeah, it's like, funny. I I usually, because usually whenever I ran across like women in the gay environment, it was more of straight men joining us or straight women joining us in the gay environment versus uh, a group of lesbians. And maybe, maybe uh, that was just it. I mean, we went, uh, most of my initial gay bar experiences was going to uh, the gay 90s, which had drag shows. Um, and that just had a plethora of different people around. And it's just like, I don't know. I was, I was just like already into the whole, like we're all together LGBT. And, and for the longest time though, the, the thing that did get me, uh, confused, weird, uh, 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 originally grossed out was the trans community until like just within the past few years when I learned more about it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, actually, that's not that big of a deal. Yeah. I think your environment can really be dynamically impacting on how you treat other people and how you like what the concept of respect is. Mm-hmm. And to be fair, I grew up in Minnesota, you know, Minnesota that. nice. Mini right. Canada. I mean, like, and that was the problem <laughs> for me was like where the way I was raised and I came up, like you, you had respect for other individuals. Like I thought mm-hmm. of this earlier today. Like my dad was thanking the staff, like just naturally. Thank you. Like, and it made me smile because I almost quipped and said to my dad, you know, to be witty, like, You can tell your mama raised you right, meaning my grandmother, Mm -hmm. um, because of how he was behaving. But 
like that's why I think it was so shocking to me, like in that very initial moment where I was kind of like, why? What? Mm-hmm. What? Why do we hate them? I don't understand. Yeah. Like, and then I remember a number of years later, I was here in Erie and my car, uh, I had a flat tire, I think it was. And I was at the parking lot across the street from the gay bar. And um, I had two lesbians stop and help me change the tire. And it was this very comical, like stereotypical situation. And someone made some comment about it. And I was like, listen, I was happy for the help. I could have not given any, you know, toots about who helped me. The fact that it happened mm-hmm. to be two butch women was like right at the top of the list as far as I was concerned. Like it was either that or, you know, like Big Daddy in his tow truck could come, you know? So <laughs> of course that would have been a fantasy thing. But um See, I just go into the moment and accept the stereotype and laugh about the fact that this is so stereotypical. Well, right. I mean, but I think and I, what... I appreciate the whole thing. I just find it, find it as a kind of a humorous situation because it's demonstrating the stereotype. Well, but this is what I've always said for for a long, long time is like, I think stereotypes come from truth. The problem over time, though, is that people use stereotypes to be disrespectful mm-hmm. of others. They they denigrate. They you know, they put other people down like they they, you know, say certain things to do certain things and i'm kind of like okay but you know like like there's there's some validity i think always to to stereotype but you'd like don't have to get crazy about it Mm -hmm. so i mean you know like um yes there is probably a significant percentage of individuals that live in the southern united states that like country music compared to other regions Mm mm-hmm you know, so you could take those two things as uh, take that as a fact and then overlay this concept of a stereotype. And you may not necessarily be wrong about that. But I think that's what gets confusing, though, is that people make broad, you know, category you know, concepts or whatever. Right. You know, just like as an example, like this is something I struggled with when I was in, in college. When I was coming out, like I really mentally, psychologically had a hard time with coming out as gay no scratch that the other way around i had a hard time coming out as a homosexual mm. i could be gay girl i could be so gay <laughs> <laughs> like you know i could be queer but to be a homo oh no 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 ma'am Mm-mm. no really not Oh yeah, I went to I went to therapy over this. Like and it was really interesting because people still like whenever I tell this like talk about this, people are I think really surprised by it. Because I'm such an analytical kind of mind. I could be I could be gay as the day is long. I didn't care. Like I could burn the whole college campus down because I was just such a big flamer. That did not bother me in the least bit. What bothered me was being labeled a homosexual. Because now because now we're focusing on sex. Mm. Now, when you use the word homosexual, what comes to mind? Sex. Men who have sex with men. Yeah. Right. Predominantly men who have sex with men. Maybe people think about women being with women, but not usually. Isn't no. that an interesting stereotype? So my my point is, like, I really had a difficulty with this because I didn't like people thinking about me having sex. Only because I wasn't thinking about everybody else having sex. Like, I don't think about, like, when I look at the lay person on the street, I do not look at them and imagine them having sex. I don't know about any of y'all, but I, your business is your business is your business. Now, if you fine, I'm not thinking about you, but I'm probably thinking about you and me, not about you and somebody else necessarily. Wow. You can tell I had caffeine. So... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but that's, you know, that's kind of how I, yeah, I, yeah. I felt about it. Like, and I really struggled with that in, in college because I did not like the concept and all the things that come with that label because mm-hmm. I felt that homosexuals were disrespected. But mm-hmm. gays, gays are fun. Gays, you know, gays are the life of the party and they're mm-hmm. very upbeat and to be gay is to be happy. So, right. But to be a homo. Uh, uh, oh, no, ma'am. That's a sin. That's doing oh, unnatural things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because that's... gay is not in the Bible. I can be corrected on this, though, especially if it's like a new edition that's been printed. <laughs> um, you know, like that was that was kind of the messaging that had come across, you know. Mm-hmm. And technically, the word homosexual is not actually in the Bible, I believe. But. Right. 
So that's a whole other debate for another yeah. time. Yeah. Well, the uh, word wasn't around when it was written. So correct. Yeah. <laughs> True. But yeah, it's it. I agree with you. Like there are things that I think your environment definitely plays a role in, you know? Um, so I'll just use my brother and me as the perfect example. Uh, my brother and I are seven years apart, mm-hmm. um, give or take a couple of months, you know, for the most part. Um, and although we were raised mostly by the same mother, we were raised by the same mother. We have different fathers. Um, but, but for him, my my dad my brother has a very different way you know he talks to especially his elders and what have you he always says sir and ma'am he always you know is that kind of has that level of respect for people and while i grew up similarly um that is not as much in my repertoire as it is in his you know he all like our family you know when we go to events and stuff um you know like thanksgiving or whatever he will, you know, he he call, you know, he'll say ma'am or, you know, he'll call his aunts his aunts and what have you. But I remember that specifically and that difference. I don't. Um, I, I and it's I, I get I don't quite understand where the difference lies other than the gap in years. But that was something that was always interesting to me, you know, um, saying please and thank you. And those things kind of stuck. But the, the sir and ma'am did not. And I don't know why. Like, I wish mm. I could tell you why that is. Because, you know, I was, you know, I was raised by my dad, who definitely wanted to be called sir, but not all the time. And it just, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a very interesting thing. It's one of those, I would, like, my mind wants to go back to school and, like, do, like, theory and all that stuff on how that, how that stuff kind of goes around. Um, yeah, I mean, I think... I think how you're raised is a is a big piece of how, like how you treat the world, how you mm-hmm. behave in the world. I think you also like you know make decisions for yourself as well, though. Like I know, well, I don't, I can't give a, a a number, but I would say a significant portion of the people I know in the LGBTQ community are probably much more respectful than not respectful because mm-hmm. of how they have been treated. Yeah. So you, I think you, I think we're, we've been slowly moving away from the time in which we were kind of being like grumpy, curmudgeon, like, you know, well, the world dealt me a shitty hand, so fuck the world. Like, uh huh. It's being a bit dramatic, but like, I felt like that was kind of a flavor of the community for, quite a long time like because probably because we were because we felt disrespected and had to fight for mm-hmm. equality to, had to gain like and i think that the most you know past five years maybe 10 but probably within the past five to six is where i think we've seen a lot of advances in which we feel more respected more like recognition of humanity just on a base mm-hmm. level that that's been diminishing like that mm-hmm. that sourness yeah i agree you know what i mean that we yeah. that therefore we i think are, are more respectful in general and i especially see that more than ever i think at pride like pride to me in the past was a bit mm, i don't know if i want to say fractured but i feel like like there was definitely contingencies like groups and populations and stuff mm-hmm and I think that that's changed over time now. Like, yeah, there's still there's still groupings, you know. There's still the kink group, and you know, this group and that group, and you know, they they march in the parade or whatever. But I don't feel that there's this much of a of a separation in spirit. I think more than ever now, there's a lot more like, hey, we are one big family. You know, we're here celebrating together, and while we may not, you know, all have the same interests and come together that much that often it's kind of like a family reunion in a way and it's like you know it's all just you know do this thing and and be fine with it and i think that that carries through the year so instead of like being like an uh, like a light switch that goes on and off Mm -hmm. where we you know oh pride's done i don't have to be all that you know great anymore i mean i think more off (laughs) right you know and and then you know become assholes you know and uh, Mm -hmm. all over again i think 
a lot of that's diminished in the more recent time. At least that's my, yeah. uh, my observation. I mean, I can see that. I can understand that. Um, I think also we've learned to be, a, we've, we've found more common grounds, as it were, as a community in general. Mm-hmm. You know, while, I mean, hell, we talked about it just before, like, you know, gays and lesbians and that whole thing back in the day where it was such a big, like, crappy, curmudgeon-y, like, feeling about things. We've now realized that we all kind of have the same fights to fight, as it were. And instead of being enemies, we should be friends to kind of defeat our common enemy, you know, whatever that may be. And I think there's still a lot more to be learned. Correct, correct. Like, like I know right now, even though I have been around trans individuals since pretty much almost since I came out, I'll say within the first couple of years, I might not have been aware of people that were, you know, uh, trans, but pretty much then after that, especially like being involved with the drag community for a handful of years, like I met individuals who were cross, like, you know, uh, into drag that were trans. And I recognize now more than ever, like, that I try, I'm very conscious about how I treat individuals. Mm-hmm. And, but even then I know that I, I haven't got it together yet. And yeah. not that, not that any of us are perfect, you know, that we ever have everything together, but I think it's more about like experience and familiarity mm-hmm. yeah. and awareness. Um, you know, like before I learned about the leather community, I had, you know, kind of a certain perspective and a certain attitude about it. Same thing, even maybe with like the bear community, you know, before I became mm-hmm. involved in it and, Joined up the ranks, uh, <laughs> you know, became a card carrying member. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think that you, um, I, I think what's probably the most unfortunate is that, like, you know, it, it's a self driven thing. Mm-hmm. To be more respectful is it takes effort, and it takes work. Yeah, agreed. It's going to take, and it, it's going to take, it's not going to be easy. It's mm-hmm. not going to be a very quick, like, like we talk about light switches, like, oh, now I can be more respectful of everyone. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some learning. But it is, um, in a lot of ways, it's something that we, I feel we need to do. You know, just be respectful of other people. And they're, everyone, I forget the meme, but, you know, you never know what someone else is going through. Mm-hmm. So, in you know, whatever the day is, you never know what exactly they're going through. And so why choose that time to be negative or be disrespectful or be, you know, assholes to them when there's no real reason to be, you know? Well, and and I think what happens is is that we disconnect. Like we, we disassociate. We're not in the moment We're we're busy, like, you know, six steps ahead of wherever we Mm -hmm. are. We're, you know, focusing on something else, whether it's a device or a, you know, who knows what. Um, And that, you know, has consequences. Mm-hmm. You know, like um, some people have, you know, in the past couple of days said some stuff to me about, you know, how um, I guess how compassionate I'm being and how I wear I am uh, mm-hmm. about some stuff. And I guess that's different like ways of, of being respectful. Yeah. And I feel like, well, like to, uh, my first inkling, which is something I'm still working on, is to be like, well, yeah, of course I am. Like, duh. Like, yeah, because I'm doing it like to me, it's like it's obvious, you know, like, but Mm -hmm. what I realize is that people are pointing it out because they're being comparative. They're saying they're recognizing it probably because it's not as common. True. So it stands out to them, which then is actually the way I think about it. Disappointing because it's like, you know, what's up with that? Um, But I think it I think it's really comes down to like, you know, it's it's learned and it's taught consciously and mm-hmm. like kind of and you have to we have to work at it you know it, that's, yeah. that's the the crappy thing is that you know you just don't naturally um i'd like to think that you would understand that but i know that that's not the case like my cousin has uh what is she three she's gonna be four i think um and there's this whole thing about how like you know she doesn't have awareness of things. So like when grandma's on the phone, she wants to talk on the phone because she likes to talk. 
well, you know, <laughs> she's she's real young in her development. She doesn't understand that, that just because someone's on the phone doesn't mean that you can be on the phone. Like, True. So, like, I was just thinking about this because we were having this conversation about how she's – her personality-wise is very, like, some might say rambunctious. Mm-hmm. But the reality is is that she's just energetic and she's – as as my grandfather said today, surprisingly, she's really engaged in life. And so she wants to see things and do things and get into stuff, you know. Um, and so uh, she, yeah. she has to be taught respect because otherwise mm-hmm. she will bulldoze the world. Mm-hmm. Unintentionally. Which- <laughs> yeah. sometimes it could be a good thing depending on what you want but you know like you know i mean sometimes sometimes you just gotta get fuck it all and just be like but but you know it's it's anyway but yeah like the one thing that i've learned over time and it's something that i've personally tried to deal with is you know i'm trying to get rid of those nuisances of life you know one of the big ones for me while kind of still there is respect your elders, blah, 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 respect, mm-hmm. you know, do, you know, everyone has kind of learned that and da, 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 because apparently there's more life experience and whatever to someone who is older than you. <sighs> well, sometimes that respect is not really, doesn't, is it shouldn't be automatic. It shouldn't, I don't think, you know, to me that respect shouldn't be automatic. I have a baseline level of respect, I think for every individual person for lack of a better phrase, you know, um, I think then my respect for you changes depending upon our interactions, our environment, or what I know about you or what I don't know, maybe not know about you, you know, things like that there that kind of will change my level of respect for you. Not necessarily that it will get any lower, um, but maybe it won't go much higher than just that base level. And is that fair? I don't, think so i don't i mean i don't i think so i don't think people would agree with that but i think that we all have that in our you know our lives we all have people that we know we won't necessarily be as more respectful to just because of what we of our of our previous experiences with them you know um not to keep bringing in the letter thing but um recent situations have caused things to happen in the letter community, especially locally. Mm -hmm. Um, And well, recently I'll use that word. That's better. Um, And because of those things happening, lights have been, uh, things have been brought to light and it has been unfortunate that these things have continued to happen and apparently have been happening for years. Mm. So, individuals that I know of that are part of that problem, if I were to interact with them in any way, shape or form, I probably would not give them the same level of respect as I would give someone who I know who has been fighting the fights and making things, trying to make things more open and accessible and available for everyone else. Right. Is that fair? That's not really up for me to decide. Well, I mean, I think what you're what you're pointing out is respect is fluid. It's dynamic. It's ever changing. It can be. Mm-hmm. Ev- it can always be evolving, but it can also dissolve. Like it can, it goes in in multiple directions. And I think that's one of the things that you're pointing out is like you know to meet the layperson on the street, you have a certain amount of respect for them. Like they mm-hmm. are a human being. They have a life. You don't know mm-hmm. any, anything necessarily about them. So you treat them with some certain, like, probably what we would call common courtesy. Mm-hmm. And I, wouldn't they, kick them out of the, I wouldn't kick them off the, off the sidewalk because they're in my way. Like, right. <laughs> but if they, right. But if they stand in your way or are busy talking on their phone and not paying attention and they bump into you. Mm-hmm then you might feel differently about them because of, you know, how you've had an interaction that probably could have been avoided, Mm -hmm. you know, based on this example. And I think that that's that's what's always at play. I mean, we talked about this before in LTAS about, you know, how when it comes to sex or even necessarily, you know, with kink as well, you know, that you have a certain amount of respect for another individual 
and that that's always should be at the forefront. You know, like, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I think about this, you know, um, from time to time that not everyone likes the same stuff. So, yeah, yeah. you know, not not every man wants a finger up the butt. Um, and that's fine. But that's about respect. Like, you got to that's a conversation you need to have or, you know, you got to communicate something mm-hmm. in that case. Not every guy likes to have fellatio, like to give or to receive. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like that's a broad generalization. People think, you know, like, oh, all gay men like to suck dick. Not necessarily. No. Nope. They're always. just like, like not all gay men like to, you know, get fucked. So, and I think that's something that, you know, is. is and just because they like to get fucked doesn't mean they like to suck dick. Right. You know. Um, and I think that that's, you know, one of the things that we're, we're at a prime moment in our human experience, thanks to technology that we're learning about, you know, all mm-hmm. these different experiences. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Pornhub. Uh, <laughs> and next to, you know, because we see things. Pornhub, like, the uh, education section. Right. Because we see this stuff and we're kind of like, oh, okay. But, you know, and I think there's a time and a place for respect. I think there's also a time and a place for disrespect. Like, you know, we've we've talked about this before within the realm of like role play and or crossover with kink. There can be healthy disrespect, mm-hmm. but that's like that's planned. It's part of a scene like it's there's, there's right. The, like it's understood. And that's also where we also talk about, you know, you're, why you're, you're, gonna you're have... strangely uh, respectfully disrespecting somebody. Well, right. I mean, that's the person. If you think about that it, that treatment. Yeah. Um, but that's also why you come up with a safe word. <laughs> yeah. Like, should always have a safe. Um, come across um, that line. We have crossed that line, so we need to stop right now. <laughs> right. See cucumber. We, we we're done. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because because there comes a moment where now I'm no longer feeling comfortable, or I think. I've rethought like the, you know, the dynamic has changed. The, the circumstance has changed. Um, you know, and I think that that's important that people are aware of that and that's always at play. I mean, that's constantly the case. I, I mean, you, let's say that, you know, somebody reaches out to you and you decide to go out on a date, like a legitimate date. You're going to go meet up and you're going to have like, you know, uh, for lack of a better reference, tacos, pick your favorite place. I don't care. So you decide to go and you go and you have tacos. That's fine. And maybe tacos will lead to, you know, enjoying some extra sour cream later. Who knows? But <laughs> from the moment that the date starts until the conclusion of your time together, like respect is always on the table. Mm-hmm. It's a, a thing that you should be aware of. And I hope more than ever that people are requesting it slash demanding it or making mm-hmm. it a priority for themselves because i think when you have poor self-esteem or you struggle with your own personal respect whether it be respect for yourself or how other people have treated you up to this point with respect i think it becomes really easy to allow others to disrespect you and you're okay with that because you you as a collective you know, or uh, let's say we we say oh well they didn't really mean any harm by it or it's okay like you know they're just being silly or witty or this and that and other thing it's a very slippery slope because just because someone is giving you attention does not mean that they're respecting you true and just because somebody says that they love you does not mean that they're respecting you true and I think that that's very challenging for people especially when they have like one picture or one experience of what that is respect is not always the same universally across the board Mm -hmm. um you know i mean i I think of it this way most of us have had an experience with going you know out to uh, an eating establishment one table feels that everything was perfect another table not so much they might feel that, you know, that they were disrespected by how they were treated from the moment they walked in the door. 
whether or not certain key factors or details were at play to create the respect or the feeling of lack of respect is very much about all the pieces coming together. But most people, I think, forget that. They think like they tend to think uh, dynamically, like in not zeros and ones, but you know, like right, wrong, black, white. You know what I mean? Like yeah. left, right, up, down. Like like there's polar, like a binary kind of concept. Like you know, this is the right way, this is the wrong way. Eh, it's not always that easy. You know, the right. the the world is multicolored, and so you know, I think you have to take the whole thing into scope, but. Doing so takes strength and integrity to do mm-hmm. that with other people, you know, to say to another individual, you know, that, no, that's not cool. Or, hey, I don't care for that. Or that was actually not very good. Like, I've I've had to do that with family members. And it's a little, ugh, it's not a little, it's very uncomfortable because it's more I've, than ever. I've noticed it's my seniors, like people who are older than me, that I've had to call out when they say things because they culturally generationally like they think it's okay to say certain things only i'm trying to live in 2019 not <laughs> 1969. 1969 right right yeah. so you know it's like that's not exactly the right thing to say these days right? <laughs> um it's not political know. correctness it is respect well, that, you know, that brings up a good point, you know, Jeff, that, you know, some people, you know, political ah, correctness. Well, you can crab about it all you want, but I think there's something to be said for human decency. Yes, that right there. <laughs> Sorry, that's the, you know, like we were talking about the random person on the street kind of, you know, situation and interaction. You know, there, there's a decent thing to do with that person. You know, there's a decent level of, you know, that is owed and due, you know, um, until such and such happen. You know, we've the thing we've often talked about, you know, in the past is that we've had, you know, we have our elders who are, you know, maybe stuck in their ways. And, you know, everyone's like, well, there's no point in trying to get them to change because blah, 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 blah. Teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Bullshit. 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 (laughs) Like, you can take you if 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 they wish to continue, you know, like life is changing. Where everything is changing, and I understand maybe it may be a little bit more difficult for you to understand it, but you should try your best to understand it and learn, you know, certain things and learn to be respectful to others. You know, just just just. Do it like it, it, it. I know it seems hard, but it's not that hard. There are certain things that we've done for years that we've done because we do them, and it's just kind of ingrained. Mm-hmm. This is no more different, somewhat in some ways, than those things. That's just the way I feel about it. Mm. I don't disagree with you, Damon. I mean, I think that's a, a key principle of. <sighs> Being a, a you know a a good human society like on a global scale you know it's like mm-hmm. we hopefully you know give and get the respect that, you know that we should have just on a base level you know that we're all human beings just going through this experience thing trying to mm-hmm. figure it out and I I think that sometimes that gets lost in the the chaos Mm -hmm. and i'm not i'm not trying to say like that there's excuses or anything but i get it like we we lose focus i guess is really what it comes down to and that could come you know in a whole myriad of things like even in the heat of the moment you know we've talked before about you know consent and respect, you know, they're 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 not mutually exclusive. You know, they're they're pretty much kind of married to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're you're busy with another individual. Hopefully, you are paying attention to them and how they're responding and behaving to things that are going on, so that you know whether or not this is okay. You know, because maybe they are so caught up in the moment that they feel uncomfortable saying something 
Mm-hmm. You know, and that's where, you know, the personal responsibility kind of comes into play that you also recognize, you know, that this person, you know, uh, may not be on the same page that you are, you know, um, I think of that, you know, sometimes when I see, you know, in adult media where the top is being, you know, uber aggressive, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's fantasy, there's all fun, you know, and that kind of stuff. But there's a certain point where it's like, I, you know, not that I doubt it necessarily a whole lot in adult media, but there's kind of like, there's a point where it's kind of like, you could be all dom daddy that you want, but there comes a moment where it's kind of like, I hope you're definitely paying attention because... You know, yeah, but then again, it's porn, so <laughs> bad to see. <laughs> but then again, if you're depending on the porn you're watching, it's actually it could potentially be real, quote unquote. Right. Yeah. And with the talk of <sighs> porn, <laughs> sounds like we've kind of reached the end. Yeah. Aww. Yes. Hey, folks, what do you think about respect? Let us know. There's plenty of ways to contact us. Uh, you can pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com. Shoot us an email, comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361 talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can find us on various social media outlets that comes out loud in the appropriate place of the URL. That's uh, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and, of course, on YouTube. Uh, if you want to join our entourage chat, which uh, has our shared media section has been referenced as being a replacement for Tumblr at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. You can find out when we're going to be recording these things at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Just a program note, the uh, what would normally be the first Sunday of September will not we will not be recording on that day, but a few days earlier on the thirtieth, where we do our birthday cel my birthday celebration. So uh, if you want to join us in oh, power fact, hour, yeah, for for the power hour, um, uh, bring your beer and a shot glass or two. Uh, and join us uh we will actually it'll be it's it's going to be an open forum people will be able to join us uh and, and chat with us and drink with us as a doorbell goes off every minute uh you can find out when we're doing all those at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col do that on a computer because it doesn't work on a phone um, you can support us in many ways, including uh, purchasing some merchandise on our merch store we've got a brand spanking new shirt Spanking, haha. Uh, uh-huh. uh, well, it's not really because it's uh, taking you on a mouth adventure. Ding. Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> uh, it's it's part of our Smashy collection. So thank you, Smashy, for helping design that. Uh, you can uh, also, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh. Well, just really quickly because I, you know, I'm wearing um, the BearUnderground.net shirt, and I wanted to just kind of show it really quickly because I just went to their website. Um, these are actually in closeout. Um, they will know Ooh. they are discontinuing the items. So the shirt that has this like logo type, they have a bear one, they have a puppy one, um, but they are discontinuing it. So the only things that are available um, are, are what they have left. So if you are interested in this shirt, Bear on the Ground has always been, you know, supportive of us. So and I just want to supportive that. of them. So and exactly. they're, so. they're now <laughs> instead of a social network, they are a merchandise site. They are uh Great people. They just got a brand spanking new puppy, which is so adorable. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Bear Underground on it, uh, for more mer- bear merchandise. Uh, you can also subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash comes out loud, where you get access to the full bod of our uh, uh, misadventures on our live show, as well as uh, uh, getting the show a little bit early, including the pre and post show. Um, uh, on the feeds. Um, also, if you're listening to us, I, I've our feed is currently set up to be uh, through a feed through a podcast player. So if you're just going to the website, you're going to have to stream our podcast. Um, I, I removed the regular download link uh, just because it was tedious to do that every single time. Uh, mm. uh, but uh, so if you are having trouble getting a show... Uh, make sure you pop into your podcast app and um, 
um, subscribe to us using that. There's links to the direct RSS feed on our website, as well as, you know, we're in the major directory, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, and uh, Apple Podcasts, and various others. Um, speaking of which, you can rate us, subscribe to us through all those. Um, you can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Set, Box Poppy, Box Cup, Box something or other. Um, I am Theater Cup 79 on most bear related sites um, and also on Facebook, or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. Uh, if you do reach out and send a message, let me know who you is, like, and what's going on. Um, also, my apologies, but uh, things got very hectic for me this past week with my personal life. So if, like, anybody sent me messages and stuff, I probably didn't get quite back to you. So, yeah, no. It's not it you. Happens. It's him. <laughs> yeah. Him meaning the GareBear. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Right. Hey, guess what, folks? Say good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Have a good one, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>